Hello, I'm Graham Horton and welcome to this video which is a review of the Myops Slider Plus. Now if you're into focus stacking this is probably the slider you want to buy. With a resolution of 1.142 microns per step, put that another way for a thousand steps you're talking 1.142 millimeters so you've got lots of resolution available if you want to get those fine increments if you're using very high magnifications for your focus stacking so this is a fantastic slider and i'm really pleased to be able to review it for my ups full disclosure they did send me the product to review for you but again it's a uh, unbiased independent review you get to hear the good points and the bad points in this video now for convenience sake i'm going to split the video up into seven parts first will be the unboxing then I'll show you the overview of the slider itself, how it's built and its features. Then we'll look at the uh, MyOps app, which is uh, used to control the application. Then we'll look at some of the basic slider functions that that app provides. Then specifically, we'll look at focus stacking for general focus stacking. And then I'll look at some extreme greater than one to one magnifications so you can see how this thing can resolve so you can use those for extreme macro uh, photography and then I've had some enhancements I found that I've needed to put to this slider to make it more usable for me and it might be for you so let's get started and let's have a look at what you get with this product so this is the semi hard shell case you get to carry it it's a very nice case nice soft comfortable handle nice strong zips to hold it and if we just undo the compartment, you can see how well protected the slider is within this unit. So we've got a basic instruction manual to show you how to set it up. Component parts that you'll receive, you'll receive a USB-A uh, to micro USB charging and an adapter for the tripod mount on the bottom, bottom which goes from the standard quarter 20 to 16.38. So you've got the adapters there for any size of tripod bush. Normally you will get one uh, camera connect cable, you'll specify what camera you have, but it's easy to add others for different cameras. So here I've got the one for the Canon uh, 5D Mark IV, and I've got one for my other Canon cameras, which is just the standard uh, 2.5mm TRS connector, and I've got one here for Panasonic, which is the 3-pin to 4-pin 2.5mm TRRS connector, which you need for Panasonic cameras. The actual slider itself is well protected and this is the slider itself. It's a 30 centimeter slider and the module on top contains all the electronics and the drive gear for the slider. So let's now have a closer look at the slider itself and I'll show you some of the very nice design features that this slider has. If we look first of all on the base of the slider you can see the central mounted 3816 hole which you can adapt to the quarter 20 with the supplied adapter which will fit into that hole. I have put some felt pads on here so when I use it on the table it's not rubbing on the table so that was one of the first enhancements I made just to put some felt pads on there so I can use this on a tabletop without scratching either the slider or my tabletop so maybe that's something that my ops want to consider for additional uh, enhancements if we look at the slider itself you can see that it's got a quarter 20 threaded mount which you can screw on here a ball and socket joint or a three-way head or a cantilever lift whichever what you want to use to mount your camera so here you can see the dry belt which uh, drives the assembly around it's a standard four millimeter wide by uh, one millimeter pitch dry belt and that loops over a drive gear in the head of the assembly the uh, roller bearings on both sides of the carriage so it makes it very smooth to transport it is a geared motor so um, that's why you feel a little bit of resistance when you're moving it side to side and it's the geared motor to give you that high resolution that most sliders haven't got so this is the geared head that drives the carriage so just inside the carriage you might be able to see here the shiny part of the roller which has got rubber tires which rub on the inside of the carriage track on either side of this extrusion um, so it's extremely smooth and no side play whatsoever no twist or turn or lift well engineered for the purpose of doing these high precision macro slider so over on the left hand side of the slider you can see we've got a reset hole we've got a micro usb socket for charging um, 
updated pub this needs to be now USB-C in compliance with most of the devices in the European region are now moving to USB-C. We've got the power on off button. We've got the two and a half millimeter socket for the connectivity to your camera. And then we've got uh, LED here, which indicates when we're on. So if I just power on the slider, you notice we get a brief flash of the uh, slider and now it's pulsing to make you aware that you need to connect the app to control the slider. In terms of mounting options for the camera, the first one is obviously just to screw your camera onto the quarter 20 spigot on the carriage. It's not my preferred option as you've got very little control on the tightness of the camera when you screw it down and it's a little bit difficult to orientate the camera onto that spigot. So if you screw your camera down onto that spigot, you obviously want the lens running on axis to the slider. So in this case, my camera is now tightened down there. I want left and right. So right is where the MyOps um, logo is. So if I just lift that up slightly, um, the slider plus is on the right hand side. So the camera is moving in the right direction. So that is how the slider would be on your desk with the camera facing forward with the slider plus logo on your right hand side so if your camera didn't end up in the right position then the camera could be slack so my preferred option is either to use a ball and socket joint on that carriage so you would install the ball and socket and then your camera on top but i've got another option which i prefer to use i'll show you that next now there was a quality control issue that my ups have acknowledged in the fact that some of the spigots on some of the sliders this thread diameter uh, the threads weren't deep enough and you couldn't get full engagement of the camera onto the um, spigot. So they are now supplying this adapter which screws onto that spigot which allows you to tighten that fully down and then you can put your camera or your ball and socket joint which gives you a better purchase. But my option is to use uh, one of these folding Z plates. So again I can screw this onto the quarter 20 threaded spigot align that where I need it to be and then I can mount the camera on here and it gives me more flexibility of raising the camera and getting the, uh, the angle correct. Obviously with macro photography you want the lens to stay parallel as it moves backwards and forwards otherwise you get a slight shift in the image which might mean the stacking doesn't uh, occur very accurately so to try and keep the camera uh, parallel to your subject is, is one of the key desires. So using one of these plates allows you to do that so that is my preferred option. Before I show you the basic function of the slider, I'll take you through the MyOps mobile app, which is needed to control the electronics of the slider head. So if we look at the MyOps app, if I start the uh, app running by just tapping MyOps on the screen, it wants to search for devices and I've got the uh, slider turned off. When I press the power on button, you get that flashing red light and then goes to green when, when we connect it. It's found the slider, so I just click on OK. So these are some of the operations you can actually run from the MIOP slider. Some of them I haven't tested out, uh, for absolutely no interest to me. So you've got basic time lapse long exposure time lapse, bulb ramping time lapse, interval ramping time lapse and HDR time lapse. You've got basic video, multi row panorama, free mode and remote controller, focus stacking, star tracker and then some calculators. Now some of these operations do require the use of other modules on the uh, slider um, but we're particularly interested in either basic video or focus stacking. If we have a look at the basic video settings, it allows us to set a start point and an end point for a once traverse, or we can have it continuously traversing left and right uh, to repeat the cycle. So let's have a look at that in operation. So I'm going to select basic video. The section in the center marked slider allows us to set the starting and ending position. At the moment, the circle is around A, so that is now going to be able to let me set the A point. So I'm going to set the A point over on the left hand side of the slider. So if I use the left key, it'll move the camera 
over onto the left hand side of the slider and we'll say that is my starting point so click the confirm icon and now I want to go to position B so I'll tap position B it, it remembers the last position you had so you can just let it run to it right and I'm going to move it a little bit to the left so it doesn't go towards the end then I confirm that as my point B so it means that the slider will now run 21.09 centimeters from the left to the right so now if we go into the movement the speed we can set a speed either slow or fast depending on how quickly you want the carriage to move so if I put 100 in there, we got ease in, ease out, it's the ramp up, so you go into a low ramp up, and then the mode, one way, two way, or continuous, so we'll select continuous, when we press the confirm icon, the camera will move over to the left hand side where we set the starting point, And now it will cycle through to the B point at the speed we've selected. And you can probably see on screen the indication of where the traverse is. So now it's going back to the A point. You can see the elapsed time and the remaining time for each sweep. So now it's going to go to the B point. The operation is locked, you can see the uh, lock key on the screen. If you wanted to stop it, hit the screen and then use the stop. If you wanted to see the speed at, uh, say, 10, done. Ease in, ease out, low, and the mode is continuous. So we'll say yes to that. So that is at speed 10. We'll change the speed to 50. So that's at speed 50. Well I've set up a basic focus stacking scene for you here you can see that I've got the slider plus set up with my Lumix GX8 with the Olympus 60mm macro lens and over here I've got a platform set up with three Lego characters overall distance is about two inches or 50, 50 millimeters so we're going to be using the uh, focus stacking app which you can see on the MyOps mobile screen there so if I tap focus stacking it takes us into the screen which allows us to set up the total movement so from point A to point B the movement per frame and allows us to set an exposure time and an interval time so the first thing I want to do is to set the slider up for giving me my starting position so I'm going to tap that center rectangle which is marked slider and that brings us into a focus stacking setup screen which is allows us to change the starting point for position A and then the ending point for position B now again in the center of the screen you can see the left right indicator and that allows us to move the carriage left or right notice at the bottom of the screen it says set your position A so it's asking us to set position A so looking down on the camera that will be my starting position if you like so what I want to do is to enable the screen on the camera so we can see 
uh, my starting position. So I'm going to move it slightly to the left and it should make this first character go out of focus. Remember, your lens is going to be in the manual focus mode. You're not going to put it in automatic focus. You want it to remain in manual focus throughout the whole operation. So I've set all the parameters. Uh, if we look at the camera, it's in manual focus mode. I've set an aperture of f4, which will give me shallow depth of field for each slice. And if we look at the shutter speed, it's going to be 1 15th of a second at ISO um, 200. So using that center slider, I'm going to move the carriage to the left. And that will show us on the screen the focus point on the camera screen. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left. And that should push our first character out of focus as we move further away. So I'm going to say that is my starting point. So I'm going to click the orange icon on the right hand side, which locks that as position A. Now we want to move the camera to the forward position, which will enable the last character to be in focus. And then we move slightly beyond it to make sure we've got the back of the character in focus. So with the app, I'm now going to um, set position B. So I'm going to tap the B and it will now move to the last known B position. So that is the B position. We need it to go a little bit more to the right. So you can see on the screen here, it is roughly focused halfway down. So I'm going to use the center slider again and move it to the right. So I'm going to move the character to the right and if you notice across the top of the screen you've got a fineness control so one times ten times one hundred times and one thousand times if you put it on one thousand times it's easier to move it in smaller increments so with that set to one thousand we'll now move to the right and watch the focus on this character so i'm going to move it to the right so the carriage is now moving forward, he's coming to focus, so I'm just going to move him a little bit further, wake up the camera, move it a little bit beyond that character, so we know we've got the back of the character in focus. And then I click the tick to lock that in place. Once we've done that, we can return to the home screen by pressing the uh, tick on the top left hand side of the ca carriage and that gives us our opportunity to now to set the movement per frame and I want to move something like uh, six millimeters for each step so if I put a step count of uh, 100 in there that will give me about one millimeter and you can see on the bottom of the screen it's 114 microns per step so we want about 500 microns so I'm going to set that to 500 so that will give me roughly six millimeters per step once we set the step we can set the exposure time and I've got this set to, set to one second, so that's going to be adequate for this because the exposure time is going to be about 125th of a second. But if you're using longer exposure, you can dial in an exposure there, which will allow the camera to take the exposure and then the slider to move to the next position. The interval is the uh, steps between frames, so it allows it time to uh, advance. I don't think I can change that. Let's just put one second in there. Yep, it's allowed me to put an interval of one second in there. So now we're ready to go. The camera is connected via the Panasonic cable. So that's a two and a half millimeter TRS to two and a half millimeter TRRS to control the camera. So I'm going to start the camera operating now. So I'm going to hit the orange tick button on the right hand side of the app and that will start the whole operation running. So I'll go back to the overview so you can see what's happening here. Go to the overhead and I'll click the tick. So the camera will go back to our starting position A and we should get our first character in focus. Takes the first shot, advances six millimeters, takes a second shot. And on the app, you can see the shots will be 80 
and the remaining time will be sort of three minutes to take the remaining shots. So I'll pause the video while it um, completes that exercise and then I'll show you what the next step will be. You now see we're roughly halfway through the sequence and you can probably see on the screen that the central character has come into focus so we're on track for completion with the third character at the 88 steps. So we're now approaching the 88 step and that has completed the overall focus stacking and we're on the third character now so we know we've completed the, the stacking. The next step of course will be to take those images into your favourite uh, image stacking program. I use Helicon Soft but you could use Affinity Photo or you could use uh, Lightroom or Photoshop to combine those I guess. Whichever uh, image editing program you have, providing you've got the facility to stack those images to produce one final image from your image set. Now I was using mechanical shutter there on the camera, you can use electronic shutter if you wanted to, saves wear and tear on the uh, shutter if you've got a mechanical shutter device. So the next step would be to use uh, extension tubes on here to get even higher magnification. So I'll do that next and then we'll begin looking at using a higher magnification lens which will give you greater than macro resolution but you need to use very very fine increments and a lot more steps to complete. So let me set this up with a macro extension tube to give me a higher magnification. For this next shot I'm using a 16mm extension tube on that macro lens and it really does allow you to get to beyond life size. So the extension tubes I'm using with the Panasonic lens are the Micro Four Third system. On the desktop you can see I've um, got a setup of a PP3 uh, battery and the total overall travel for the slider is now going to be 7 millimeters and I'm going to be taking uh, 26 frames using that increment of 250 steps. Let's start that running by clicking the tick on the app. The camera will go back to its starting position which is just ahead of that terminal of the battery and now it will make the 26 shots to increment through the object. So 25 exposures, 26 exposures completed and again you take that image stack and convert it to into, a, into a single image using your focus stacking program. I've got a very 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 poor uh, example of an insect here, uh, it's a dead bee but obviously if you're into this in a big way you'll prepare your samples, make sure they're fully hydrated and dusted to make sure there's no dust particles on them. It's a whole new uh, sphere of operation. Um, it's not something that I'm uh, usually doing. But to give you an idea of the resolution of this slider, um, I'm going to try and take a shot of it. Um, so the overhead view of the camera, let's go to the starting point, which is the beginning of that B and it's going to make uh, 64 exposures and just do the head which is rather dehydrated and uh, in a terrible state but I'll give you an idea of the sort of things you can do with this slider using this high resolution mode. So that will take another minute and a half to complete. Once it's complete I'll focus stack those images and show them in the final production. So we've seen how you can achieve some fantastic stack shots using your macro lens or an extension tube with the Slider Plus from Myops. The fine increments that you can achieve allow you to get some fantastic high magnifications and allow you to get those precise movements between each step. If you want higher magnification still, you need to use something like these microscope objectives, but that's a whole new science where you need uh, bellows and uh, collimating tubes. It's not the purpose of this video to show you how to use these microscope objectives. I might do a separate video which will show you the features of the Slider Plus allowing you to use very very small increments. 
You do need flash and you do need other assistance to get these macro shots working extremely well. And it does take a lot of sample preparation if you're using insects to make sure they're hydrated, the legs are in the right position. So it's an art and a science for those people that actually do those sort of shots as a full-time occupation. Now you remember in the opening introduction to the video I did mention there were some enhancements I made to make this slider more usable. One you saw underneath was those feet which allows you to put it on a table and it doesn't scratch. The other is to install a uh, scale underneath the track bed of the slider and it gives you a rough indication of how much movement you will need. So if you've got a subject that's got five centimeters depth you can actually see five centimeters been traversed on the uh, scale so this would be underneath the slider on the track bed so that's it for this video i hope you found it enjoyable please do have a look at the full description of the slider on the myops website and i'll put a link to that in the video description below you can find out more and more about this the exciting product and the uh, 360 slider capsules which go with it to enable you to do star tracking and all sorts of things so, until the next video, thanks again for watching. If you're a new viewer and you like these reviews, please do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon and you'll be advised when I upload new videos. So, until then, thanks again for watching. Please do take care and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Goodbye for now.